This is the goal when you're a married businessman. You have got to build a system that survives without you, that thrives and grows without you. Because that's when you truly have it all. That's when you have this, this marriage of we get to play all day, which is what I had in my software company for three decades, where, where my wife knew all the time. It's like, dudes, you know, how did I stay married 36 years? Like some guys are doing this the wrong way. I'm going to be very blunt here, and I understand that if you're not an entrepreneur, you may never be one, and I'm just going to tell you it's harder. I'm going to tell you that if you are an entrepreneur, it is easier, because if you're an entrepreneur, you build a business that pays you whether you work or not, and then you don't work. Now, you can't take your eye off the ball. You have got to make sure you've got an amazing leadership team. You've got to make sure that that amazing leadership team is executing. You've got to make sure that the business is growing. You've got, I mean, you've got to keep your eye on the ball, but that only takes a couple hours a week. And then you're a hundred percent present with her. You can just play whenever she wants to play. You can go get the granddaughter anytime she wants to get the granddaughter. You can tape stuff up. You can kill bugs. You can, you can ride around. There's, there's no friction of what, everything I open this call with, right? There is no friction. I don't care what we're doing. I'm just so grateful to be in your presence and be breathing the air that you want to breathe. We can go quilt shopping. We can go you know, flea market. We can go clothes shopping. We can go lay on the beach. We can do whatever you want. And by the way, when we get home, there'll be more money in our account than when we left. Like what woman is going to leave that? There's no stress. There's no irritation. There's no pressure. And now you could mess it up. You could be a jerk because you wanted Italian and she wanted Chinese and you put your foot down or because she stopped initiating. But it's like, dude, it is so much easier to not mess it up when you don't have that pressure. So what I'm going to tell you is that that trying to build a business while you're married is insane. But if you can if you can succeed and not get divorced through the process and get to the point where where she has so much money coming in that she doesn't want to leave you like her lifestyle plummets. Like not only that, she has you present. Not only that, you're not a jerk. You're not a monster. You're not a mama's boy. You're treating her wonderfully. Like, I mean, no woman is going to leave that. And then you, you have your occasional setbacks. You have your occasional, well, that'll be better for your next wife. Or, or you know, why after 36 years, have you not changed or whatever? But it's like, all of, all of the above said, it, it's easier if you have a business that's built in like that. When a man is a Christian, when a man is a Christian, marriage is played on a whole different level. Like, you could take almost everything that I've said. I think I mentioned Jesus a couple of times here. You could take almost everything that I've said, and it applies to a secular audience as well. But as a Christian, this marriage does not belong to us. This marriage belongs to God. This, this, this heart, this body, her heart, her body, her life, her soul, my soul, our kids' hearts and bodies and soul, the time they have, the air they breathe, every bit of it belongs to God. And inside of that space, it is on loan to you. And he is watching. And how you act and how you perform, there will be an accounting. There will be a judgment day. And so it's not just about, do I have a happy, carefree wife who is enthusiastic and initiating behind closed doors? All of those things are wonderful. Do I have a stable platform from which to build my business where I'm not like up here worried? Is she like researching lawyers? Is she talking to her friends? Are her friends, you know, trying to talk her out of it? Or, or you know, is her brother or her parents trying to get her to move in with them? I don't have to worry about any of that. I'm just up here building a business, right? But the thing is, is it's like, while those things are good, those things are very temporary. Those things will pass. What God says to you on Judgment Day, like that that's forever. Like that's for eternity. And so for anybody who's like, you know what? this is too hard it why even do it why not just be single why not just you know get on those dating apps and you know when i have needs i'll just find somebody on those dating apps what's well, like good luck with that man if you're a christian 
If, if, if you're a Christian, then what you've got to do is you've got to look at this as the training ground for your sanctification. Like, like every one of those interactions. Can you imagine Jesus doing that? Can you imagine him sitting there, standing there, tapping his foot? You know, being resentful of me because I was talking. Would, would he be resentful of her for talking to them? Would he be resentful of her? For, oh, now I'm convicted. And all she wants to do is share her heart. All she wants to do is tell me about her day. It's like I don't have to listen. I get to listen. It is a privilege. It is a gift from God that she's even willing to talk, that she's even willing to share, that she's even willing to open up, that, that here she is. This is what I teach. She had a good interaction with those people and she was feeling good. And she came running to me as the guy who was supposed to make her feel better. And while I did not make her feel worse, I will tell you that I have just been convicted that I was, that I failed, man. I, I failed on the ideal that I teach. Because what I should have done is I should have helped her to make that into a better lift, a better feeling for her. That's what Jesus would have done. And this is the defining point of this call. Why you cannot do this without Christ. Because when you leave him out of the picture, it tends to be about you and whether or not you're getting laid, bluntly put. You get him back in the picture and you will be convicted in your heart, in your mind, and your soul, and he will teach you how to love her. Thousands of men I've spoken to and they're like, Bob, how do I, how do I love her? Like, I, I think I love her, and she says, I don't feel it. Like, what do I do? I can only bring her so many cups of coffee. I can only fill her tank up so many times. I can only do all her chores. Like, I can't do her chores and then do her chores again. What, what do I do? I'm like, man, if you really want to learn how to love your wife, think back when you go to bed at night, think back over these interactions. But think back over them with Jesus standing there. Imagine you're in this room and you're like you're in a movie theater and you're sitting there and Jesus sitting next to you. It's going to make me cry. Jesus is sitting next there, next to you. And as you're watching this movie of what happened that day, like, you know when you messed up. It's like you can't see it before that. You can't see it before that, but put yourself in that movie theater and put Jesus next to you. And all of a sudden, you don't even have to ask him. Metaphorically, in your mind, in this dream state, whatever it is, I want you to look over at him and you're going to see him shaking his head like, yes, yes, that was a missed opportunity to love her. Yes, that was an unkind thing. Yes. That was sin in its purest form. So as a Christian man, it's harder, but it's, it's easier. It's harder, but it's easier is the best way to say that. We've talked about every little girl at two years old. She has this fantasy that she's going to be married to a king. This king does what I've been telling you here on this monologue. This king takes responsibility for her feelings. This king is careful with those feelings. This king protects her heart and mind and soul. This king becomes the master of his own soul. Meaning what? Like Paul, he says he beats his body. Can you beat your body? Metaphorically, emotionally speaking, can you beat your body all day? every day so that hers doesn't have to take any licks can you be tied to that post where jesus took his lashes can you metaphorically do that for her when she's talking to her friends when she's recounting the story about the conspiracies when she's taking forever to get in the car 
when she's talking to her sister and, and shutting you out, when she forgets to remind you about the whatever, or when she comes and tells you that you're a jerk, or you need to clip your nose hairs or clip your ear hairs or brush your teeth or put on nicer clothes or stop leaving your stuff laying around or making her feel disrespected. Can you take those lashes so that she doesn't have to take any? Because if you can't, you are the frog. If you can, you are the king. And what is your reward? Your reward is twofold. You get a reward with a happy, willing, enthusiastic wife here on earth. And you get to have a better conversation with Jesus when you go to heaven. So don't be the frog, man. Be the king. And I just want to sum it up with, if you will use as a tool, as a mantra, is she the most important thing? And is she the most important person in this interaction? Now, clearly, God is the most important thing and the most important person. But we know that he has commanded us to love her the way Christ loved us. And inside of that space, keeping in mind that God is more important, right? If God came down here to earth and he said, Bob, I'm more important than this moment, I would fall down on my knees and say, yes, Lord. But short of that, short of, and as long as I'm leading her towards him, as long as I'm trying to set that example, as long as I'm on a path and inside his will, and I believe that I'm inside his word, as long as I'm believing that stuff, then I have made him the most important thing and the most important person. And that gives me the bandwidth to focus on her. And so inside of that space, is she the most important person and the most important thing in this moment? Like ask yourself that every single moment. And what you're gonna find is you're gonna find the answer is no, if you're being honest. And that's a simple turnaround that the answer is yes and the thing that I was holding out more important than her is less important than her questions <laughs>